Inside Science. Not one, not two, but three COVID-19 vaccines are now closer than ever to production. That's according to preliminary results from three major companies. On the 9th of November, Pfizer reported that their vaccine was 90% effective in protecting against COVID-19. Nine days later, they bumped that up to 95% after analysing new data. On the 16th of November, Moderna reported similar results with their vaccine, 94.5% effective. And on November the 23rd, AstraZeneca reported that one of their dosing regimes had reached 90% effectiveness in trials. Now, I want to start with Pfizer and Moderna because both of their treatments are different than any previous vaccine. Unlike normal vaccines that teach the body to recognise a dangerous virus by injecting weakened or partially broken down virus particles into the body, the new vaccines don't inject virus at all. They inject RNA. Now, RNA is a molecule in cells that carries instructions to build proteins. The RNA contained in the new vaccines has the instructions for a protein found on the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Our cells then use that RNA to produce the viral protein and then display it on their surface. When immune cells come into contact with these surface displayed viral proteins, they learn what the real virus would look like. And the initial trials indicate that these new vaccines reduce the risk of developing COVID-19 and that is brilliant. But it's difficult to get details on the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines yet because neither company has released raw data or published a scientific paper. But according to Ugo Sahin, the CEO of a company working with Pfizer on their vaccine, the company designed their RNA to reach a specific kind of cell in the immune system, one called a dendritic cell. Now, these cells absorb markers from pathogens like viruses and bacteria, then display those markers to other immune cells, effectively teaching the immune system what to look out for. But Ugo Sahin says that they went through over 20 different sequences of RNA to find the one that targets the dendritic cells best. Now we don't know if Moderna's vaccine also specifically targets those dendritic cells, but we do know that it also depends on RNA. Although, there is a potential issue with this kind of vaccine. When RNA is injected into the body, the immune system treats it like a foreign invader and promptly destroys it. But Moderna have thought about that. Their vaccine switches out one of the original nucleotides for a synthetic one, and that dampens the immune response. The third vaccine, AstraZeneca's, is similar to Moderna's and Pfizer's in many ways. It also delivers RNA to human cells, which then produce viral surface protein. But instead of delivering the RNA in little droplets of fat, like Pfizer, AstraZeneca's vaccine delivers the RNA in another virus. They take virus particles from chimps, deactivate them so they're no longer infectious, and then package up the RNA inside them. Now, all this progress is super exciting, but we have to remember these results have not been peer-reviewed by independent experts yet. There's still a lot of science to do before we can be confident these vaccines are safe and even effective. But things are still moving fast. Pfizer have already applied for emergency use authorization from the US FDA. That could allow their vaccine to be used before completing the normal tests. And once permission is given, they are ready to go. Pfizer say they could produce 1.3 billion doses by the end of next year. Moderna say they could produce 1 billion. And AstraZeneca say 3 billion doses. Although each vaccine requires two doses per person to be effective. But production is only part of the solution. Storing and transporting these vaccines so that they stay effective is just as important. And here, the vaccines differ again. Pfizer's needs to be kept at a chilly minus 70 degrees Celsius. That's minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. But not all medical facilities have that kind of cooling equipment. Moderna's can travel at minus 20 degrees Celsius, so much like a normal freezer, and then last up to 30 days at typical refrigerator temperature. But AstraZeneca's can survive for up to six months in the fridge. So all these factors will come into play as the world attempts to end this pandemic. And lastly, this month, hasn't all been about COVID. There's also been a fairly important election. And after that vote, magic mushrooms are now legal in Oregon. This is great news for medicine because the psychedelic ingredient in magic mushrooms, psilocybin, has been shown to help treat mental illness. In the last month alone, 
Psilocybin has been found to alleviate migraines and act as an antidepressant when used in conjunction with therapy. And further down the west coast, there's new evidence that psychedelics have been contributing to art for thousands of years. In Pinwheel Cave near Los Angeles, California, strange drawings adorn the cave ceiling. Now, researchers have analysed fibrous tissue that was found near those paintings. They discovered that the fibres come from the Datura plant. Datura contains scopolamine and atropine, chemicals that bring on feelings of inspiration. And these Datura fibres had been chewed, suggesting that the creators of the rock art had ingested the drugs in the plants. The study's authors think that the pinwheel pictures are actually drawings of the Datura plant itself. Now, there was so much great science this month, but sadly, I've run out of time. But when this video finishes, check out this story on the Inside Science website about the quantum internet. But that's it from me. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.